Hello, my name is Brittany Garrett, and I am the Collections and Research Public Programming Specialist here at Old Sturbridge Village. And today, I'm going to be talking about mourning art from the early 19th century. In the early 19th century, mortality rates were very high, and it was common for families to lose loved ones. This was also a time of great social change, and concepts of death and the afterlife were shifting. So in the 18th century, death was considered a place of judgment or salvation. And by the early 19th century, we see this changing, especially because of the growth of Romanticism. So Romanticism stemmed from the growing industrial world. Populations were growing, which was increasing a disparity of wealth, and the factory work was creating the separation of the home and work. So this all created an idealization of the home and ultimately of heaven. So heaven therefore became a haven, a place where you would be reunited with your loved ones rather than a place of judgment. So throughout the 19th century, we see overgrown graveyards becoming these beautiful manicured cemeteries. We see the creation of mourning art um, and also mourning jewelry to memorialize loved ones. And we also see um, the creation of rules and codes for mourning as well. The earliest forms of mourning art were embroidered and painted silk pieces that were created at ladies' academies and drawing schools. And this style was inspired by English and European practices of memorializing their public figures in textiles, ceramics, and in prints. And Americans imitated this especially after the death of George Washington on December 14, 1799. This was the first display of mourning um, for America, and they created a lot of mourning art afterwards. This piece here is an example from 1801 created by Thomas Clark in Boston, Massachusetts, and it depicts the tomb of George Washington with a line of mourners, including a personification of Columbia. So this general design is elaborated on in later mourning art, and we see the use of classical and biblical motifs especially. For example, verdant landscapes and willow trees are used in these pieces to represent um, resurrection and everlasting hope. We also see the figure of a woman veiled or covered in cloth, and she is the personification of grief. And lastly, we see the use of an urn, which is an Etruscan symbol meant to symbolize the spirit of the departed. So many of these motifs can be seen in this piece here, which was created in 1810 to memorialize the death of two children in the Stone family. It is created with silk and metallic embroidered thread, and the background, faces, and figures are all hand-painted. In the center here, we have an orange oval with the names, death dates, and ages of the two children. So Aaron Stone died in 1801 at the age of five, and Hannah Stone died in 1807 at the age of seven. And Aaron and Hannah were the children of Samuel Stone Sr. and Hannah Craig of Oxford, Massachusetts. The couple had married in 1792 and had had seven children. And it's likely that their eldest daughter, Elizabeth Mary Stone, was the one who created this piece. It is attributed to the Abbey Wright School in Hadley, Massachusetts, and Elizabeth was at the age of 16 in 1810, so she likely created this piece while she was at the school. So memorial art like this became very popular. However, it was restricted to those who could afford to go to school or could afford the materials and time needed to create it. And by the 1830s, these are replaced by memorial prints. So the process of lithography made printmaking a lot simpler and less expensive. So printmakers like Courier and Ives and Kellogg and Comstock were able to create memorial prints for just a few cents each. And these prints could be personalized as well. There were different groupings of mourners and there was also a space left for personalization. And this is a great example here. This is a mourning print for Israel Peasley Sanborn, who died on July 20th in 1849 at the age of 25. And we can see that we have a likely mother and father and young child as well in this mourning print. So unlike today, people in the early 19th century couldn't take photos of their loved ones. You could certainly get a portrait done, and there was some early photography in the form of daguerreotypes, but these were restricted to people who could afford it. Instead, these mourning pieces acted as memorials to their loved ones, and they were likely very prized possessions. A lot of love and patience went into the creation of these pieces, and it allows us a better understanding of how people in the early 19th century coped with death and the afterlife.